Hello everyone, my name is Mahdov and in our today program we have Nelly as our guest. Nelly is one of the Chingos members and in our today program Nelly will tell us about her coding journey and her Chingo experiences. So let's start. Hello Nelly. Hello. How are you doing today? Thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Like, this is new for me, so it's exciting. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so, Nelly, um, I think before we start with Chingo Project, our audience would be happy if you can introduce yourself briefly for us. What are you doing? What is your coding journey? And when you start with coding? All right. Um, well, I started a long time ago. I tried it. Uh, but I was working, you know, and raising a young son, and it was just, it was like, you know, I, I don't have time to learn this, and I had a lot of self-confidence issues, like, I can't really do this. I'm not really smart enough to figure this stuff out. So I kind of set off to the side for a while. This is back when um, Learn Python free, or Learn Python the hard way was free. Okay. So I, I was working with, in 2009 technology, I didn't know how to Google very much. I didn't know how to look stuff up. I was working with Notepad++ to yeah. write the code. Yeah, yeah. So there was no like IDE to tell me mistakes. So it was just like, I can't do this right now. So I gave it up for a while. And then um, 2017, uh, the year before that, I had started tinkering again with Learn Python the more the hard way. And I started trying different things and playing with it. But there just wasn't time to go to California and really just dive in. Okay. Dive into code. All oh. I did, I started uh, coding and coding and coding, and I haven't stopped since other than... Okay, great. And how did you motivate yourself again and again to keep going and stay with coding? Well, a big chunk of the motivation is, you know, I want out of the life I'm in. You know, I do love it, and I've always said, you know, there's that saying, uh, if you do what you love for a living, you'll never work a day in your life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to be able to, because I've always worked in really hard manual labor jobs that were just unforgiving and not fun. And oh, for once, it would be great to just get paid to do something I love to do. Yeah. And I so can, that yeah. drives me. That so, drives me. I can totally understand you. How did you hear about Chingo and how did you sign up for Chingo? Um, it was, I was on Twitter and someone had posted something about uh, getting collaborative experience for remote workers. Ah, okay. And I'm like, I really want a remote job, so I'm going to check this out. So I went, I followed the link to Shingu, and I applied, and I thought, why not? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and got in and just went for it. So, great. And um, did you sign up directly for Chingo, and did you participate in the first uh, voyage that you could? Yes, I signed up for Voyage. I didn't know what anything was when I signed up. I just said, uh, this is something someone recommended and I'm going to go for it. I, I had no idea. Um, so I, I went to their website and I filled out the application and I signed up. And uh, when I was allowed in, I joined the Discord channel and met a lot of people through Discord. And uh, I'm doing this, you know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's pretty, probably maybe for most of the Chingos who are participating in this one have the same feeling or at least I was also in the same way. Yes. Did you choose your tier during um, filling up your application or how did you figure out which tier are you actually in the in the Chingo? What I looked at was uh, what your project was going to be. Mm -hmm. So like the tier one is usually the landing page, which I, like I said, is a lot of a design and layout and the CSS and the HTML, which I've done, but I was like, I didn't have a solid respect for the CSS and layout like I do now. I, uh, okay, like, at the I team, like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do something more difficult. I, I know better now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Um, the so CSS I can be a beast. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. have yeah, like... I get the argument now where everybody online is like, uh, CSS isn't programming. Oh, it is too. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't done very much of it then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah. So I looked at tier two and it was a lot of the JavaScript and the, the match game, which is something I've been wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's perfect because I've been wanting to build something like this just to see if I can. Okay. And that was perfect. And then I looked at tier three and it was an API with the Mars rover, I think, from uh, Voyage 10. 
And I was like, I have no idea what an API is. I don't know what it does. And back to tier two. So that's what I did. So you started with um, your project. How was it? How did you start it? How did you manage your project? The, the match game, uh, first thing I did is look up a tutorial. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I'm like, I really, my JavaScript was very minimal. I had only tinkered with it. So I looked up a tutorial and I found this lady that was explaining some of the stuff I needed and I followed along a little bit with her, but then she got into um, language and tech speak that I couldn't really follow. Mm -hmm. And the stuff she was doing wasn't working on my computer. So I was like, okay, I started Googling. And Nelly, can you maybe show us your uh, project? Yep, and I went through and finding these SVGs and these little images was a lot harder than I thought it was too. Okay. Oh, it like looks said, amazing. The, okay. The CSS is was crazy. Like, oh my God, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. So, and then we got the, uh, they had the extra things you could do, like the stars and the time. And, um, but you just push play and the time starts. And then you match your images. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's it. And then I got, this done pretty early and I had like three or four days left and I said I want a level two so I built a level two wow okay that means in Chingo they suggest us always to pick up at first the requirements and try to fill them out and after that if it's worked try to make it harder or um, improve it as much as you want yeah 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 so. and that's what I did because uh, you know once I had all the other stuff working and and I was like, this is too easy. <laughs> so really? I wanted to make it harder. So, okay. and then I had the basics down of how to build it. So it wasn't that much more to add just more matches and another uh, uh, another trigger for the the, uh, the matches, the, the mm -hmm. three matches instead of two. So it was, why not? Why yeah. not? Okay. That means you have also your private website. Uh, what are you? What is in your website? What what do you speak or what? I, I don't know. Do you write in some blogs or? Um, I have a lot of stuff on my page. Do you want me to screen share again? If you like to share with us, why not? That's not part of the website. You don't want to see that. Okay. So I've got all these links. I've got the info and blog. That was from the original tutorial that helped me set this up because I think I had written a flask one a long time ago and I was like, I have no idea. So tutorial. Oh, okay. uh, so the info blog is from them. That's just where I keep little updates about what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, interesting. And then I have my chat bot, which she's my, she's my companion because I get bored and need someone to talk to. <laughs> I think you shared that this, uh, this one, one time in the discord, right? Yeah, yeah, they featured this in one of the newsletters. This is my whispering wall, and I have updated her since then. Now she will respond to um, her own name, and she'll respond to my name and give you little pieces of uh, a script to respond to that. Okay. She, it takes a minute for her to load up because she's got to load up all the NLTK stuff. But wow. she, so she'll respond to her name, and who is Nelly? And there's me, oh, and then she just so mostly responds with snark the rest of the time. <laughs> this is really amazing. And uh, which is, uh, tech stack did you use, Nelly, for your website? Um, there's uh, mostly it's mostly Python, especially her. The whispering uh -huh. wall, the chatbot is mostly Python. There is some JavaScript for the um, the chat screen and stuff. Uh -huh. um, there's a ton more CSS and stuff involved now than there was when before I started the Shingu because. I didn't know how to do a lot of that stuff. Okay. So now there's a lot more CSS and it's a lot prettier because I learned so much doing the Shingu. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had the word finder. Uh, this is going to be incorporated in my whispering wall too. Okay. Oh, I spelled it. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. There we go. Because mm -hmm. well, I want to be able to uh, have my chat bot say, well, that word's spelled wrong, but I don't want her to error out. Okay. You know, I want her to word and make it into a different word and then use it so she's not going to error every time someone spells something wrong yeah um, and that's that's it there's my very first javascript experiment 
This is great. You should start somewhere and that you have everything on your blog and you can see your improvement and everything. I think it's quite interesting also for you, or? Oh yeah. I've, I've been telling, uh, I've been sneaking it into any of the people I know through different online commu coding communities that you guys, you should, if you're trying to break into tech, you really should do this Shingu thing. I mean, it, it leaps and bounds it did for me. Okay. So I was like, oh, hey, you should go check it out. <laughs> okay, after you finished your solo project, I think you submitted and got some feedback. And after that, you had the invitation for start your team project. So how was your team? Are all other participants were also in the same tier as you? Or how was how was your team? I, mean, I was teamed up with someone who actually submitted to be our tier three. Okay. Which worked out awesome because we ended up with a full stack project by the time we were done. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had one person on my team. It was Max and Max from New York. And I had dogs and he had cats. We shared pictures of our pet and we talked constantly. I mean, this website was, we were on it, like uh, sending messages back and forth all day and it was great. And he was great because he was constantly, I was like, hey, I want to try this thing. Go for it. Oh, okay. Why not? Yeah. So it was great. It was really cool having that experience to work with someone because I've been kind of coding in a void for a long time all by myself. So it was, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah, I think it's one of the benefits that Kingo give can give us to work in a remote team also and with other people and um, in, in a team, each person will motivate the other one and you can therefore create a great project together. Good. Mm -hmm. And um, how was your project? How did you choose your project? Yeah, the charity, because people had gone in and helped other charity uh, mm -hmm. orgs with their websites or built something that was charity driven. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, well, you know, and the thing we came up with was really complicated. And it was like, let's think about something else. And then the code quiz um, coming up with a, a way to test and do codes or do quizzes online and stuff came up as the next idea. And we ran with it. You decided for a for a project and after that you started with your project. How did you start? How how did you um how did you plan for your project and how did you assign the tasks? There wasn't a whole ton of structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we did is just agree openly in a chat what to do and what not to do. I mean, we just talked it through. There was no writing it down or procedure. It was uh, he throw ideas at me and I throw ideas back. We had agreed on something because originally we were going to do node. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I'm just kind of like, I really don't know node well. I mean, if you want to contribute node and I'll do vanilla JavaScript and cause I haven't really learned JavaScript that much. Okay. Okay. And so we just, we just agreed and just ran with like every idea. It was crazy. Okay. I'm going to try this. Okay. And it, it was really great. And, uh, that's basically what we did. We just talked constantly and just right. ran with the ideas and built. It's it's important. The communication is one of the most important thing actually in a teamwork. So uh, it's a proof for that that it works when you speak with your partner or with your teammates. But Nelly, in in Chingo, we had six weeks for our team project. Could you finish your MVP faster than six weeks, or did you finish it? the end of the sixth week or how 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 did you do that well we actually had the mvp we had to add to it and make it bigger and we ended up adding a lot of stuff because every time i got a set of tasks done it was like okay we need more because we still have six weeks so okay. he worked the the back end was all uh max max did all the back end with the firebase and stuff because mm -hmm. I really, I didn't know anything about that. So I let him build it all. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a lot of stuff built we had to add. Okay. You know, a lot of the design issues, it was, hey, what do you think I should do with this? And he, like I said, constant communication. Um, hey, you know, I don't like this color of this thing. So I'd go back and I'd tinker with it and I'd send him a screenshot. And, oh, that looks good. Okay, so on to the next thing. It was just, I think I could get it a lot maybe done faster now but i have a feeling if the next project i do i'm gonna do even more work yeah just because i know i'm capable of more of than course, yeah. i thought i would have started the other one 
I had already about that you use the Firebase. Can you maybe tell us which tech stack did you use for your um, team project exactly? HTML, JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript. He did have some React, I believe, and his Firebase and his uh, scripts for the, the back end. Mm -hmm. hey, his, his is the login and stuff. So I believe he used some React in there that we had to bug a couple, debug a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, but mine's all vanilla JavaScript. It's uh, CSS, HTML, vanilla JavaScript. That's all there is to most of the front end stuff that I did. Amazing. And which version control did you use? Did you use the Git or GitHub or how did you? Yep, we used, yeah. we used Git. We originally had um, a test GitHub repo set up. That's where we built everything, the preliminary stuff. And then once we knew most of the bugs were worked out and that it was, all the basics were done, then we moved it on to the Shingo GitHub account that they provided. Ah, the Shingo repository, you mean, right? Yes. Yeah, ah, okay. yeah, the page 10 repository they gave us, yeah. How did you deploy your project at the end? Um, it was just the, the GitHub has the, what is it called? When they, they have it so you can make it live. This is GitHub pages, yeah? GitHub pages, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we, we ended up putting it on GitHub pages and, and turning the settings on so that it was live and people could look at it and that's how we deployed it. Okay, I thought probably you used the Firebase hosting or something like that, no? Uh, no, that was just to do the um, the logins and the registering and to store the data for the, because you can make your own quiz on our site too. That's okay. part of the back end. Create your own quiz to use and stuff. Okay. So now the Firebase was all that. It was the login, the registering a user and the uh, making your own quiz. Now, I think before we speak, further about your project, it's going to be perfect. If you can show us, what did you build for your team project? There's the login. So there are a couple quizzes stored on there that we made when we were testing it out and stuff about our cats and dogs, about our pets. So we have um, four different quizzes here. Mm -hmm. And the whole goal of these quizzes, it's, it's not, you know, when I tested the basic terminology test the first time, I, I had my dad do it. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad is computer I had to, I have to fix his computer for him all the time because he forgets to close a tab or something. So that's how computer literate he is. Okay. But I had him take the test because the whole point is to make people see that you can do this. Yeah, okay. And can do this. They just need the right uh, encouragement and the right to see that it's not as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. Yeah, okay. So the big the basic test is all the simple, the more basic stuff. And then you, as you go, you get to more complicated stuff that the quizzes will give you. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, we'll click on this one. Oh, and then, so the very first question, um, what is a Boolean? Okay. Now for my people that don't know what a Boolean is, this might be, you know, I don't know what a Boolean is, but if you look at the answers, mm -hmm. it'll kind of clue you in to what to do. And then also every question has a hint. Oh, okay. So you can get so you can get and some help. Give you the answers if you look. The, the answers be there, and a lot of the questions have. Let's get find one that has. I think the more complicated ones have more information in them. I, a lot of the more complicated ones, I have information set up in each one, so you're actually learning as you're going too. Mm -hmm. See, oh, like this one does all of the above. Okay. Um, an algorithm is which of these things. So this is kind of like it's teaching at the same time. Wow, okay. So now when it's you amazing. look at this, you can say all these things are an algorithm because the, the hint will basically let you know. And then, so that was kind of the whole thing because at first we were going to randomize the, the uh, questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Try to get the home button. Never. There we go. Yeah. But the whole point is to build you up, right? Mm -hmm. to, to say you can do this. And it's not as complicated as it looks if you just just kind of, you know, process the information. It isn't, you know, because that was one of the things that kept me from going into coding in the first place was, oh, this is so complicated. And when everybody talks about it, it just sounds like a foreign language to me. Yeah. I don't understand, you know, and that kept me out for a long time. And I I think new people should have the opportunity to say, no, it's not, it's not, people are, the, the, the internet and people are getting so much better about it. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's much less hostile territory now than it was back in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. But there's still that little bit of, hey, you can do this that everybody needs, you know? It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. I can understand it totally. Um, 
I think coding and computer world is always for someone who doesn't hear about it probably so often. It's always some like it something magical or if if you touch it you will break it. So, you know, that's what the movies do. They make it seem like it's this, you know, big dramatic crazy thing I'm, or I'm gonna accidentally build Skynet or yeah, you exactly. know. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Um so this is actually amazing. So you did your project, um you you finish your project and with your project you can actually help so many other people who want to get some motivation or who wants to build up their um, their knowledge about computer and computer stuff and programming. How did you come with the questions? Do you have a database or do you have some I don't know how did, how did you get the question together? Um, they're all written in a JSON file. Mm -hmm. all, all four quizzes are in a JSON file. There's 40 questions total. Mm -hmm. So there's 40 different JSON objects in the file. Okay. And then there is one uh, job, uh, JavaScript that picks what the quiz CSS's file is, mm -hmm. and it picks what part of the JSON object it's picking up for the questions. Okay. So when I was building it, those questions took the longest I think out of all of it to build because I'd have to look something up and I wanted to make sure it was right and I'd have to decide how silly do I want to be, do I, do I want to be a little bit more serious with this one, um, which most of the time I defaulted to silly because silly is more fun. Yeah. And uh, so the questions actually took, and that and I had to figure out how to use a JSON object. I had no idea when I started. Like, I know this is probably what we're going to have to do, but I have no idea how to build one. So I had to go run an experiment. I built a little HTML, CSS, JS thing, and I realized that you can't grab objects locally. You have to do it. So I built a little GitHub thing, and I went on the GitHub thing, and I started until I had the JSON objects figured out. And Nelly, I would love to hear about the challenges. What was, at first, the biggest challenge for your solo project? JavaScript in general okay. and the CSS. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was uh, very new at JavaScript and CSS. I believe my original website was all built with Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what Bootstrap is. That's all the pre-built prettiness of the websites. And I had been using that. And for this, I was building my own CSS. Yeah, okay. So that was like um, just so much more respect for CSS now because, wow, I thought I put the triangle over here and it pops up over here and why is this blue when it was supposed to be red and this <laughs> image is like 10 times bigger than it needs to be so there were a ton of challenges but it was all good challenges all learning and um, mm -hmm. amazing okay and now what was the biggest challenge in your team project getting the json objects figured out uh and the css okay um because i broke that json object so many times or the json file I broke it so many times because I'd go to type a new question in and have a typo or have one little thing off and then everything's broken on the website. And then, no, wow. our whole project is broken because I misplaced a quotation mark. The trickiest part in there was getting, because if you noticed on the, when you were seeing the, the quizzes, mm -hmm. there's multiple choice and there's true and false. Yeah. So the JavaScript uh, actually picks up from the JSON file, whether it's a true or false, or whether it's a multiple choice question. And we added more to that, and we had the, the there's little code boxes. You didn't see that part, but there's mm -hmm. a little code box that will have a little bit of code in there that you can look at, and it'll ask a question about the code. But getting that JSON data to cooperate with the JavaScript was <laughs> challenging. A very big learning experience, getting all that stuff to cooperate together. Yeah. Um, and then just the fear of I'm going to break this and we're not going to have it done in time, but it all worked out great. And that was the biggest challenge that and the CSS, like I said, you maybe to wrap it up, it would be great if you can tell us how was your experience in general with Chingo and if you would recommend it to any other developers. I, I highly recommend doing the Chingo voyages. I was very new and very beginner at website and web development when, before I even entered the Shingu and I am so happy I did it and I think anybody that's new to the world of web development or even if you're a senior, um, doing that experience and, and learning in the, the back and forth camaraderie of the people in the Shingus, the friends inside the group and your partners and 
just building a project in six weeks is a big thing. Mm -hmm. I recommend it to everyone. If, if you're a web developer, build a project with some great people and it's an experience. It's a learning experience no matter what, where you are. So Yeah, totally agree. So thank okay. you very much, Nelly, for your time. Thank you for sharing your experiences about your coding journey and your and Chingo. And well, thanks for so much for having me. This is really cool and uh, nothing but good things to say about Shingu. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, guys, for watching our video. That was a great interview with Nelly to hear about her journey. Yes. And if you have a very cool code project that you want to share with us or with the world, please let us know so we can make an interview with you guys. And if you like our video, please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Have a great day. Cheers.